Just a little update on CPR, and we're doing the doctor's ABCD. So danger, response, send for help, airway, breathing, compressions, and defib. So we're talking about adult, child, and infant. And there are differences, remember, with the head tilt. So infant is at neutral position. And if you need maybe a slight head tilt, then the child is full head tilt and the adult is full head tilt. Remember to not block off your hand with their throat because that's defeating the purpose of trying to give them breath. So head tilt. The head tilt is really important. Remember that tongue relaxing back on the airway of an unconscious casualty will stop them from breathing. And all you need to do sometimes is head back and they will release the tongue off the airway and if they are able to still, they will breathe. I actually had a guy who did this. He was gray, he looked dead, he looked terrible. My heart was racing, adrenaline was pumping. And it was like, doctors A, B, C, D, danger, no danger, response. Hello, can you hear me? Squeeze my hands, hello? Squeeze my hands if you can hear me, hello? Now there's cows as well. What is it, cows? Can you hear me? Open your eyes, what's your name? Squeeze my hands. Acronyms don't work well with my brain. Cows, you know the lady with the cows, moo, <laughs> cows. Not that, but common sense. If something else, if his body is moving and his eyes are open and he's having a spasm, that doesn't mean he's breathing. It's a spasm. The body goes through different processes, unfortunately, and it can be very scary and very, very scary. The guy I had, can you hear me? Squeeze my hands. Hello, and he knew it was, I was there from before. He looked dead, my heart was racing, he was grey, it was horrible. Danger, response, no response. Airway check, my hands were shaking. I was like, okay, head tilt. I did this, airway clear. As I got to here, I could already hear him breathing. He took a breath, and I thought, was that a spasm? And I thought, I'll wait for the next one, because I wasn't sure, you're allowed to do this. And he took a breath, and I thought, oh my goodness. He's breathing. Danger response sent for help. Airway check. Breathing check. He was breathing. I don't need to do CPR. Thank you. No CPR. He is breathing. He goes into recovery. So I put him into recovery. I kept checking his breathing and he kept breathing and I was really happy not to do CPR. It's a good thing. But you see if I panicked, if I forgot the airway check, danger response, no response. Airway, I forgot the airway. If I go, he's not breathing, I would have done compressions. I don't need to do compressions. I need to do A before B, airway check before breathing. It's really important and I see so many times people panic and they jump in. He did look dead, he looked terrible because he's lost consciousness on his back and so that tongue had relaxed back, he stopped breathing because he couldn't breathe. He was suffocating on his tongue. That's all I did and he was able to breathe for himself, which was fantastic for me and him. Put him on his side. Okay, fantastic. He is breathing. Wait for the ambulance, done. Tick. So, if they're breathing, fantastic. If they're not, 30, breathing. If they're not breathing, straight into 30 compressions. Remember how to arm, you can do this, you can do this, I don't care what you do. We don't care, as long as you do it right. Along here. 30 compressions, two breaths. In class, write your name at the top of your face shield so you know what's front and back. 30 compressions. One, two. One, two, three. This is no good, this is the guts. This is no good, this is not gonna help. On the bones, on the bones. Something else that's really concerning is the rib cage is protecting the heart and lungs, the organs. They're protecting our bodies, they're protecting our organs. We're trying to compress the heart. When we do this, we're squashing the heart. We're squashing the rib cage down to squash the blood out of the heart. When we do this, that's good. The rib cage is protecting the heart. When we do this, we are likely to break ribs. Doesn't matter. Best case scenario, they wake up in hospital going, oh, my ribs are so sore, it hurts to breathe. Yeah, that's the best case scenario. Worst case scenario is when they get buried, because you were doing this, 17, 18, crack, oh no, I broke a rib. Oh, I'll go softer. 28, 29, 30. see how that's bad? 
because they're not going to recover because you didn't do compressions effective. So they have nice ribs because you didn't want to break their ribs. You did their breasts, but you did nice soft. You didn't want to break it. Then they have nice ribs in the coffin. You see the point? Nice ribs in a coffin or wake up complaining in hospital. Oh man, she broke, she broke four ribs. I have a crazy policy. If you see my dead face on the street one day or gray and murky, if I'm there on the street and you do CPR, please make sure you check the airway before you start compressing. Check my breathing. If I'm not breathing, I don't care how many ribs you break. I don't care if you break six ribs. I want to wake up going, she went hard. Whew, really hurts to breathe. And in six weeks, I'll be better. Much better to wake up complaining about broken ribs than have nice ribs for the coffin. Okay, so that sort of gives you some ease. Paramedics break ribs. I've had heaps of paramedics say me, you can't not break a rib. The adrenaline's there, you're banging in their chest. Best case, they wake up complaining. So don't worry about breaking the ribs. If you're over here, it's not good. Here, okay? 30 compressions, two breaths. Child, one, two. You can use two hands, you can use one. Depends how strong you are. Center of the chest, heel of the hand. One, two, 28, 29, 30. Two breaths. You're not blowing up a balloon, you're not doing aerobics. One. I can feel that with my hand too. One, two, 28, 29, 30, two breaths. Done, baby, it's a production line. See the armpit? Two fingers, two thumbs. I don't care what you do, how you do it, just be effective, okay? In the chest, not like this, in the middle of the chest. See that down the middle? There, 28, 29, 30, two breaths. They're gonna be two tiny little puffs. Didn't work, head back. There, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it and I can feel it. One, two, remember, breathe, fresh breath, breathe, fresh breath. One, two, okay, one, two. The other thing too you need to think about is, I don't wanna break their ribs because it's a cute little baby. Effective, okay, remember, the ribs is protecting the heart and lungs, you need to be compressions, you need to be effective. 30 compressions, two breaths. Not little, so, tiny little soft ones. Not getting to crazy, this is too much. One, two, third of the depth, there, okay? If you're not sure, triple zero. Because danger response, send for help. Can you call an ambulance? Oh, 112 on my mobile and speakerphone, or triple zero on my speakerphone, okay? Danger response, send for help. Airway check, breathing check. Airway check on a baby is the same, neutral. Are they breathing, yes or no? Breathing fabulous, not breathing, no good, okay? Danger response, send for help, airway check, breathing check. If they are breathing, recovery. Baby position, recovery is like this. See how you've got the mouth at the lower point? Because babies are really soft and floppy. And this is a mannequin, it's about a kilo. A real baby this size would be about six or seven kilos. I wouldn't be able to hold it like this. So you need to, you can come in through the legs and hold the jaw. And what you're doing is, you're having them so that the mouth is the lowest point. The whole point of recovery is this, having that low, the mouth down low, okay? Hold them, triple zero, whatever you need to do. We'll show you recovery in another video, but I'm here now. Danger response, send for help, airway, breathing, compressions, defib, defib. Get someone else to keep going. Keep them compressing, compressing, compressing. They're doing the compressions, you're doing the breaths. Compressions, breaths. You get the defib out. First aid kit comes, get the deep head out, get the pads out. Top right, lower left. There's pictures, tells you where to stick them. Lower left, top right, turn it on. Analyzing heart rhythm. Okay, stop. Do not touch the patient. No, no, you don't do CPR now. We've got to let the deep head work. It's Shock okay. Advised. Charging. Stay clear of the patient. Make sure no one's touching them because they'll get zapped too. Deliver shock now. Ready? Press Done. Shock delivered. It's a, a spasm. It's Start not a shock, CPR. it's a spasm. Keep going your CPR. 20, uh, one, two, three, four. Get someone else to count for you. 28, 29, 30. Face shield, on. It didn't work. Oh, what have I done wrong? Oh. 
There we go, there's one. There's two. One, two, three. Get someone else to count for you. Okay, keep doing that until the defib says otherwise or you're handing over to paramedics. Done, turn it off. Questions would be, remember if you break a rib, that's the smallest part of their problem that day. Okay, you're not gonna get sued for breaking ribs. You don't get sued for breaking ribs. You don't get sued for doing first aid. You get sued if you're the person that hit them and you're responsible for the accident, but not for the first aid. Don't do silly things and you'll be fine. Basic first aid. They need a response team for help, airway, breathing, compressions and defibs. And remember, you need to debrief. You need to write incident report forms, you need to hand over paramedics, tell them exactly what's happened, and you need to talk about this because this is scary stuff and they do make it or they don't make it. And remember, if they do make it, that's great. And if they don't make it, or if they make it and it's me, I give you one box of chocolates per broken rib. So if you break six ribs, I give you six boxes of chocolates. Don't aim for like greediness. But um, if they make it, great. If they don't make it, you still need to talk about it and think about the things like, they made it because of you, but if they don't make it, at least you gave the family a chance. The family will know that a first aider helped them at the scene. A family will know that their paramedics got them. They will know that they got to hospital. Uh, medications and intervention were offered and given. They were able to say goodbye at the hospital bed. They were able to fly family in. If you're an organ donator, even better. So you don't know what's happened or what's happening or what's gonna happen afterwards, but all you can do is the best and feel really fantastic that you've tried to help someone. Also be aware that when a body, when a person is unwell and non-breathing, their body does go into spasm. And what you can see is their eyes could be opened, they can be a terrible colour, and they can be in spasm. So their mouth can be opening and their arms. Don't you love that? So their body can be doing weird things. You need to look for that chest rise and fall, rise and fall, and that is breathing and nothing else. So Debrief, talk, and do your best, and it's always better than nothing. Australian Resuscitation Council say you give 30 compressions and two breaths, but if you assess the mouth as a danger, such as hygiene, and you don't have a face shield, you can do compressions only. So you can do, just do compressions. Use the defib or just do compressions until paramedics come. You can ask if it's in the workplace, if it's John or Peter who's 61 years old in the cafeteria. and. You can say, go get the first aid kit, and there is a face shield there. Then you can do breaths and compressions, breaths and compressions. Just work with what you've got. You don't have first aid kits out on the street or wherever. Think about first aid kits in your car, and um, just try your best and do what's good for everybody, including yourself.